Hey guys, so in this video we'll be talking about graphics cards for stable diffusion and there's been a couple of really significant developments, one involving AMD, one involving the RTX cards from NVIDIA. So we'll start off with the RTX cards from NVIDIA. The RTX 4060 Ti has seen a significant price reduction of about 10%. This is within about a month of it launching in July. And that is significant because I cannot recall any situation where an RTX card dropped in price within a month of launch. So the price came in at $499, we're seeing it at $449 from Zotac and it's not just Zotac we can also see one here from Asus we're seeing one from Asus the Asus Dual uh, GeForce 4 RTX 4060 Ti 16 gigabyte advanced edition this one comes in at $449 as well so a significant price reduction very very soon after the uh, launch which was at the price of $499. And quite interestingly, we also have one coming in from PNY, which is coming in at $430. Now we'll take a closer look at that one. This one from PNY. PNY is one of the middle of the road companies for graphics cards from Nvidia. They are pretty decent when it comes to warranties, when it comes to customer services. And with this one, it started off at around $436 when it launched a few days ago. And I would say with this one, with it selling directly from Amazon, I think it looks like a pretty decent purchase. Uh, I wouldn't have any problems purchasing this one from PNY. So if you're looking for value at the moment, I would say the RTX 4060 Ti 16 gigabyte um, is good value and I will link to this one in the description in case you want to buy this one. In the United Kingdom there have been price reductions as well so the price for the 4060 Ti started off at £479 and for this particular one it's the only one that I saw a price reduction for it's gone down £50 to £429.99. I think the price reductions make these really attractive. I will link to this one again in case you want to purchase it. And I'm going to be talking a little bit about the performance of the uh, of the different versions of Stable Diffusion, Invoke AI, uh, Automatic 1111, Comfy UI uh, with an 8 gigabyte card and maybe giving you some ideas as to whether you want to try to upgrade if you're going to be using SDXL, the new version of uh, stable diffusion, the one that has these big six gigabyte files. Now, if you come and look at other locations in the United Kingdom, we're looking here at box technology. The prices are over 500 still. So we've really just seen one or two graphics cards drop in price. This one, uh, th th this list here, I'll link to this list here. This is a pretty decent company. Get <laughs> they're selling it with overwatch this is nvidia's way of trying to push these out of the out of the door i don't think many gamers that are purchasing the 16 gigabyte 4060 ti are gonna be that much interested in overwatch i could be wrong but i think if you're purchasing a 16 gig uh graphics card you probably want to play AAA titles with really really good graphics but hopefully the prices will I droop down a little bit. They're, they are a little bit higher here than they are on Amazon. AMD launched a couple of new cards since the last time that we spoke. And these are the 7800 XT and the 7700 XT. The 7700 uh, is a pretty decent looking card at 54 compute units. And so the 7800 also looks like a pretty decent uh, card especially with 16 gigabytes of uh, VRAM uh, unfortunately I've not seen these actually selling in the shops so whilst I've been able to do quite a bit of price research on the Nvidia cards I haven't seen enough of these in the shops to be able to say really what the what the actual price you're going to be paying for them but obviously it does feed into the idea that the fact that they have just launched does feed into the idea that perhaps the price reduction that NVIDIA have just announced uh, might be related to the arrival of these new cards. Now, uh, another really important 
development is related to the ROCM platform. This is the platform that's used for running Stable Diffusion in Linux. It seems that there is a, a development that has got quite a lot of the AMD fanboys excited. It involves the arrival of ROCM to the consumer graphics cards. So ROCM has generally speaking been associated with the workstations, the professional cards, which cost quite a lot more than the consumer cards. And uh, what Pharonix are saying here, uh, they have a quote from Vamsi Bupana, who is a representative of uh, AMD. And she says, we plan to expand ROCM support from the current currently supported AMD RDNA 2 workstation GPUs to select RDNA 3 workstation and consumer GPUs. And it's that consumer GPU part that has got a lot of people excited because obviously this means the ability to run some of the code that you need in artificial intelligence on these CPUs. Uh, and here on Pharonix, they do compare ROCM say about NVIDIA is NVIDIA meanwhile continues supporting CUDA across their entire span of consumer and professional products going back generations from launch day. And what I would say is, look, CUDA, which came out more than a decade ago, 15 years ago, even five years after it came out, there was some reluctance to adopt, to adopt it by some of the large software houses. It is now the dom one of the dominant platforms and it's one of the key reasons why NVIDIA is so powerful in artificial intelligence. So it takes a long time for momentum to build up behind these platforms. And there's actually a page here which discusses high performance computing. It is the sort of workstation professional level uh, area of AMD. And they discuss HPC ROCM. And there's a section here on HIP, where, which is called um, Heterogeneous Computing Interface for Portability. Now they mention here that HIP, like CUDA, is a dialect of CC, supporting templates, classes, Lambda, and other CC, C++ contract, constructs. Now, this is not an area where I'm very, very strong. So if you guys wanna jump in with some comments about what all of this actually amounts to, feel free to do that in the comments. What I will just say is that the community seems to be excited about the idea that uh, ROCM could be used to emulate NVIDIA CUDA. So enabling code compilation for either AMD or NVIDIA CUDA environments, there may be a degree of compatibility between ROCM and NVIDIA CUDA. It does depend to some extent on whether developers are willing to work with ROCM in this particular way. For those of you who are really interested in this, I will link to the um, originating article, which has really sparked off this, this discussion here. What I would say is I'm not entirely as enthusiastic as some of the AMD guys. I know from past experience that it can take a bit of time before, before uh, any platform really gains traction and begins to be used in a way that significantly improves workflows. And whilst I was looking for a little bit of color on this uh, whole situation, I came across this piece, a bunch of uh, people discussing uh, the technology. One guy here, th this is the AMD forums. It's not uh, an environment where you would expect people to be hostile to AMD. Uh, and what this individual, Ben Balin, says is, uh, if we compare it to CUDA, even on Linux, there are numerous exact there are numerous issues. Graphics cards in the field of, of artificial intelligence are lacking and leave much to be desired. If you're only considering changing your card due to VRAM, let me tell you that, for instance, in AI work environments like stable diffusion, an NVIDIA graphics card with half the RAM of an AMD one performs much better and has better workload management than one with double the RAM from AMD. So hopefully that adds a little bit of perspective, a little bit of color to this whole discussion. Feel free to jump in the comments as well with your own ideas about this, if you have any uh, opinions. I'll have a brief discussion of the situation with Comfy UI, Invoke AI, and also with Automatic 1111 
on an 8 gigabyte system and if i'm just going to summarize the findings i would say if you are intending to run invoke ai on a system similar to mine or if i was running uh, invoke ai uh, the the new version with sdxl i'll be looking to upgrade my system i'll be looking to run the system with 16 gigabytes of vram the nvidia uh, rtx uh, 4060 Ti 16 gigabyte version and the same would apply also with automatic 1111 uh, with Nvidia with the uh, comfy UI I could get by with an 8 gigabyte graphics card for quite some time uh, because it does seem to be very well optimized for running with stable diffusion and lower amounts of memory so uh, I, I have a slightly longer piece which I will play towards the end and maybe that will give you a little bit more insight into these conclusions. Some links in the description to these graphics cards that we've discussed and hopefully I'll see you guys in the next video. So I tested the performance of an 8 gigabyte graphics card, RTX graphics card with Invoke AI 3.1 with the latest automatic 11.11, that's 1 1.6, and also with Comfy UI. And what I found with SDXL was that I was not able to satisfactorily complete a render in Invoke AI. On this machine, with 8 gigabytes, it just would not perform. So I would need a 16 gigabyte graphics card to perform satisfactorily with Invoke AI. I was able to complete a 1024 by 1024 with the stable diffusion 1.5 meaning that the problem was the uh, the amount of ram the amount of vram because with the stable diffusion 1.5 you're obviously dealing with you're dealing with a model of about 2 gigabytes with stable diffusion xl you're dealing with 6 gigabytes for one you're dealing with 6 gigabytes for the refiner so it's uh, quite a lot more memory that you need to actually complete the process satisfactorily in Comfy UI, complex images like this, which require a lot of processing with multiple uh, models and also using LoRa files, these take about a, a minute or so to complete, uh, whilst a standard 1024 by 1024 takes about half a minute, 20 minute, 20 seconds to 30 seconds. And that's the fastest that I've got on this machine. And within Automatic 11.11, I was able with a lot of optimizations to get the render times for 1024 by 1024 down to around one minute, 50 seconds to one minute. And that required a huge amount of optimization. But uh, I was able to do that, whereas with Invoke AI, I was not able, in spite of a lot of attempts to optimize things, I was not able to get that performance improvement. Uh, without the optimization, it was taking two, two times uh, as long as that, maybe sometimes four times as long as, that to, as long as that to complete a render. So, so far, I would say probably with Comfy UI, I feel eight gigabytes is comfortable with SDXL it becomes a little bit uncomfortable with automatic 1111 but we may see more uh, improvements over time and with invoke ai there's definitely a lot of work that i would need to do to get it running in any kind of reasonable way with sdxl now i did try the new graph menu inside of uh, invoke ai but that didn't seem to support sdxl as yet